This is the Uptick Newswire Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews, public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world, with your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, we have a returning guest, and he has a different company. Uh, our guest is uh, Richard Serber. He is the uh, CEO and, and CFO and president of Green Endeavors. Well, they trade on the OTC markets under the ticker symbol GRNE. Uh, currently, they operate two uh, salons that sell Avita products exclusively. GRNE flagship uh, salon is named Landis Lifestyle Salon, which is uh, an Avita lifestyle uh, salon also. Uh, Richard, welcome back to the show. Hey, it's great to be back, Everett. You guys trade on the OTC markets under the ticker symbol GRNE. You know, you guys are doing revenues, and correct me if I'm wrong, for the last three or four years, just a little bit north of uh, $3 million, and your market cap's only $1.62 million. Uh, you know, I just think it's very undervalued, what I saw for your company, what it's doing. Can you bring us a little bit up to speed and maybe give us some basic information about your company? Yeah, I mean, so I've, uh, I have I, uh, founded the operating entities um, in 2005. And these aren't, you know, your run-of-the-mill, you know, tiny hair salons. Um, we have scaled these operations up. So, I mean, the flagship location, just to give the listeners an idea, you know, on its own, uh, you know, last year did, um, you know, north of $2.2 million in gross revenues. It had EBITDA probably, uh, you know, around the $350,000 range. Uh, it's for over 4,000 square feet. It has 20 uh, shares. For, for cutting hair, and it has a thousand foot that's devoted to selling, uh, you know, Aveda's retail products, which includes hair care, skin, makeup, um, and other lifestyle um, <clears throat> products. You know, I was looking at some of your uh, metrics, and even though your revenues have stayed flat for the last year or two, just your recently, you guys have done a 40% across the board improvement on the bottom line. How did you do that? Um, well, we've gotten rid of a, a lot of, um, you know, instruments that negatively impacted the income statement. So there was some, you know, convertible financings um, that that were in there. Um, there were there was a, a large related party note um, that we uh, settled out for stock. So it got rid of, you know, a massive interest expense that was weighing um, the company down. So we got rid of, you know, all those things that are you know, below the line, you know, is how I term it, that we're hurting uh, the profitability of of the company. So it's just, you know, cleaning up the balance sheet, cleaning up, you know, a lot of debt. Um, we've worked on recapitalizing the capital structure of the company. And we're basically teeing everything up for, um, you know, my future growth plans. You know, you guys currently have uh, six salons in the uh, Salt Lake City, Utah area. And what is Aveda? What, what exactly is your, is your guys' claim to fame? I know you have the salons, but maybe you could just give us a little rundown of, of, what, of what exactly is your go-to product. Right. I mean, we carry Aveda products exclusively, and as a result of carrying their products exclusively and holding a license agreement with Aveda, we're required to adhere to their high uh, operating standards. So, um, and it also means as a lifestyle salon that we sell, you know, a minimum amount of products on, on a monthly basis. Um, I mean, Aveda is actually owned by Estee Lauder, which is probably, you know, the most prominent you know, uh, personal product, you know, company. Absolutely. I think they do somewhere north of, I don't know how many billions of right. revenues, you know, that, a, a, that Estee Lauder does. But, you know, Estee Lauder is, you know, a set forth, you know, the operating guidelines with regard to Aveda. You know, and Aveda is all about the, um, you know, ancient Ayurvedic um, <clears throat> 
health and wellness practices that's been carried over, um, you know, from India. And uh, I mean, Aveda in the industry has some of the best education, you know, for stylists. It does have the best education, you know, for stylists in the industry, and that's kind of the backbone of our organization is making sure that our stylists have the skills in order to command, you know, the highest uh, prices, you know, in the market. And that's the reason why our margins, you know, far exceed, I mean, by a factor of probably, you know, 300, 400 percent on the flagship location as far as net profitability um, goes and the type of revenue, you know, that our flagship location generates it's in the top 5% for this for this industry. So the Aveda model, you know, when you scale it the way that we have done, it can be a highly lucrative and a very successful, um, you know, business. It's not a it's not a booth rental location. It's not uh, it's not one of your lo- you know grocery store margined you know super cuts salon situation. Um, you know we really run the business, uh, you know, from a financial perspective based upon, you know, the numbers and then, you know, on the, on the, when you're on the floor, you know, perspective, you know, from the guest perspective. So, our, you know, our model is about, a lot about, you know, rock star <laughs> hairstylists, about catering to um, the guests. And, you know, when you follow the Aveda operating, you know, mantras and guidelines, um, the end result is, a very satisfied guest that's willing to pay a premium in order to get, you know, the type of service um, that she wants. So, so what what are your plans uh, for the growth of the future? Right now, you have six salons. You're, like I said, you're in Utah. Are, are you going to stay in Utah? Or are you going to expand out to other states? Well, we have two salons and then a um, uh, and then an Aveda retail store that's in the Salt Lake City area right now, and they're doing what I think somewhere around a three point. Just under three point four million dollars in revenues at this point. I mean, the plan is probably to build out at least one or two additional flagship-sized locations, and then execute upon a roll-up strategy in order to, uh, uh, you know, introduce you know the model, uh, you know, on a nationwide basis is 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 what my plan is. And the thing is, is uh, there are tons of the salons that are in this middle market, um, you know, where the owners are running highly successful, you know, businesses, but they have no succession plan. And there just isn't a market, you know, out there currently, uh, you know, of buyers, you know, that want to step in, you know, to the shoes of some of these people that have been operating, you know, their businesses for 10, 20, 30 years at this point. So I think there's a tremendous, um, opportunity for us to come in there and um, uh, fill that need. Offer them some sort of exit strategy. Yep, exactly. You know, whether it's a combination of cash and stock, whether or we, whether we do an offering, you know, and just buy them out in cash, and then um, you know, <clears throat> slowly um, uh, or quickly, depending on the situation, uh, you know, get them to exit. Um, Absolutely. The business. I mean, there's, there's, there's probably forty billion dollars, you know, worth of revenue produce, producing salons that are in this particular space in the United States alone. The company that we're highlighting today on Stock Day is Green Endeavors Inc. Uh, they're out there in Utah. They trade on the OTC markets under the ticker symbol GRNE. In closing, I wanted to ask you briefly. I was reading a, an article about uh, you guys uh, took a some sort of. Uh, uh, I think investment in Nexus Holdings. Uh, how does that become a, some, some part of synergy with, with, with your company? Yeah, no, Nexia Holdings. It, Nexia Holdings is the is now Sack Lunch Productions. It's the parent uh, to Green Endeavors currently. But but the plan with regard to you know Sack Lunch Productions is to actually spin uh, Green Endeavors off and separate it from Sack Lunch Productions. Um, Green Endeavors is has just been a long-standing subsidiary, you know, of of, uh, of Sack Lunch Productions. And uh, when we do execute upon our roll-up strategy, you know, we want to have clear and distinct lines between the two lines of businesses. So that's in the works. 
over the next... Uh, I'm glad you explained that yeah. because I was a little bit confused about that. I said, well, I'll, I'll wait until Richard comes on the show and, and ask him what, what exactly uh, is that. In, in closing, is there anything you would like to get out to our listeners that maybe you and I didn't get a chance to, to touch upon? Well, I mean, you know, Green Endeavors right now and has an extremely low float. I think it's under a million shares at, at, at this point. Um, I, think yep. we, I think we've done an excellent job of cleaning up a lot of debt on the balance sheet, and we're poised. To, to execute, you know, on our on our business plans, and there's just tremendous opportunity, you know, at this point. I think, um, you know, the people who are listening to this thing should take a look. And I don't think it would take, uh, I don't think it take too much interest from the investment, uh, you know, community to, uh, you know, to you know get get this company priced where I think it should be, which is well north of the 30 cents that it's currently bid at. I agree with you. Your float is only 942,000 shares out there. Your market cap is roughly around 1.6 million and at a stock price around 30 cents plus is is very undervalued. I I wish you nothing but continued success. I appreciate you coming on the show, giving us an update on Green Endeavors. Uh, They trade on the OTC markets again under the ticker symbol GRNE. Richard, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Everett. Have a good day. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire, LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are those of the guests and those of the respective companies they represent, and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of Uptick Newswire. Uptick Newswire encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of this program may have paid for its distribution and are not directly affiliated with Uptick Newswire or the station.